Well, thank you guys Perfect. for coming to today's Let's Talk Wellness. Um, here we are with Sam um, demonstrating my unfried plate, the air fryer cooking edition. So we're gonna use the different food groups in the air fryer and you can just learn how to balance your plate with something better for your crunch. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Sam. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to type into the chat um, and let's enjoy our demonstration. Perfect, thanks, Jen. Well, first of all, happy National Nutrition Month. So March is National Nutrition Month, near and dear to my heart as a dietitian. So we thought it would be so fun to talk about different air fried foods today. And what I did was I actually air fried a whole entire plate. Um, so I'm gonna go through each piece of what I actually did, what's on the plate. I'm gonna demonstrate how I kind of season things, put things together. Um, and then we're actually gonna cook some chicken. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the time um, and make sure that we'll be able to see the finished product. But just in case we don't, um, I'm gonna hold this up a little closer. I'm not sure if you guys can see. Um, I have a different camera set up today than I usually do, but this is what I made today. So we did air fried potatoes, air fried Brussels sprouts, and air fried chicken tenders, or I guess they're chicken nuggets. So my fiance helped me out, he's a sous chef today, and he helped me uh, cut them up into cubes. And um, I definitely have some great tips on how to kind of get the batter to stick and all that great stuff. So let's um, move through some of this, uh, some of the ingredients and kind of where we went with this. So generally my plate is portioned out um, as vegetables, fruits, grains, protein and dairy. And as you can see, air fryers preheated. As you can see, I actually have yogurt here as the dairy portion of our plate. I actually air fried some bananas and I put them on top. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I'll bring it closer at the end. I'll come closer to the camera so you guys can really see it. Um, but I will say that got really sticky, but they are delicious. <laughs> so um, first up, I'm gonna show you guys what I did with the chicken only because I wanna get that in the air fryer and get it cooking. So what I have here is I have my chicken breast. Now, of course, chicken breast is gonna be the leanest type of option for chicken that you can buy if you, and removal of the skin is super important um, when you're buying any cut of chicken. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it, I guess they're, they're not really cubes, they're, they're cut, rectangles, I'm gonna call them rectangles. Um, and he's very precise, so he did a great job as you guys can see. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna put them into the flour. Now I know a lot of, I mean, we've all battered stuff before, right? We know that flour, then egg, then breadcrumb makes a huge difference. What I love about this type of flour, we're actually using chickpea flour for no other reason than that's all I had in my house today, <laughs> but it also makes a really nice batter. I actually air fry buffalo cauliflower also. Um, and I always use the chickpea flour because it really makes a nice batter. So that's what's really nice about um, using, the, using the flour first. So I've got coated in flour, then I'm going into an egg, um, an egg wash. Now I wanna make sure that I'm not saturated here with the egg, right? We don't wanna make sure we're not dripping um, only because we don't want the breadcrumb to get too wet. Now, how many of you guys have worked with panko breadcrumb before? If you guys could put it in the chat and Jen, if you wanna shout out, if anybody has answers to share. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that we've got our chicken wet here. And I went to the, I went to Wegmans set, uh, yesterday and they actually didn't have um, traditional, just plain panko. Um, so I actually picked up a gluten-free option only because I liked what the ingredients list said better than some of the other ones that I found in the aisle. So um, I always like using plain panko breadcrumbs because I can season them however I want to. They definitely need seasoning. Um, this one smells really good. <laughs> and as you can see, it's really like bright. So you guys can see how well this actually really stuck after having the flour and egg mixture. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna grab the air fryer basket. So there are different types of air fryers. Um, the one that I have is the air fryer basket, as you guys can see here. I'm gonna grab this towel. And I'm gonna put my chicken right in there. Um, so just to save on time, we actually coat pre-coated a bunch of these. So um, it, this does take a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but what's really great is you can do this ahead of time. So we actually prepped these last night and we kept them in the fridge 
Um, and what's really nice about that is that the breading really sticks to it after, you know, being in the fridge overnight. So even if you needed, if you know you have a, a day where, or an evening that's gonna be super busy, or you know you're gonna be working late, um, it's nice to have stuff like this already prepped. And for those of you that use the air fryer already, you know how quickly the air fryer cooks up food. So um, especially because these are small, they're gonna cook, cook up pretty quickly. And like I said, with different air fryers, it's all going, cook times is gonna be different. It's gonna be different based on how big your chicken is. So if you have chicken strips or ch full chicken breast, those are of course gonna take longer. Um, when I did the first batch of these for the plate, took about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, oh, almost forgot to spray. So I'd like to spray with the avocado oil, especially when using the air fryer, because if you guys have been to a couple of my cooking demos before, we always talk about avocado oil being a higher smoke point oil, which means that it can tolerate higher levels of heat than your traditional olive oil um, and other types of oil you might use to cook. So I'm just gonna give it a couple of spritz. And honestly, you don't even need it. I forgot to do it on the first batch, um, but I like to have a little bit there. So I'm gonna put it in. I'm preheated at 375. And I'm gonna put it in for about seven minutes just because I wanna give it some time um, or I wanna be able to check it to make sure that we're not burning. I wanna kind of move them around. I'll probably flip them as well. And I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'll show you guys what I did next. So how many of you guys are fans of Brussels sprouts? Does anybody eat Brussels sprouts? Or just yes. really stay away from them? Yes? I <laughs> awesome. definitely do. Um, so I always find that they're really tricky to make. <laughs> so you have to make them like exactly right. Otherwise it doesn't, I don't know, to me it doesn't taste great. So what I recommend is, uh, these were huge for some reason today. I have no idea why, but I had huge Brussels sprouts. Um, so when you're cooking them in the air fryer, what I would recommend is trying to get them all the same size, same as the chicken, same as the potatoes we're going to go through, just because they're going to cook through a little bit more evenly. On my first batch this morning, something, and not that I've never air fried these before, but this happened to me today, so I want to bring it up. You want to make sure all the loose leaves are actually off of the Brussels sprouts because of the convection, the air moving through in the air fryer. I had a couple of leaves like hit the top burner and it started to smoke. So just be mindful if you are gonna put um, Brussels sprouts in there, I must've missed one or two. Just make sure that the loose leaves, like there's no loose leaves in there that you're putting in. So what I love about this is it's so easy. All I did to prep was spray some avocado oil, a little salt, and a little pepper. And what I love about doing this in a Tupperware is you can prep these just as I did. And then you can put the lid on them once they're seasoned and just give it a couple of good shakes. And that, what that's gonna do obviously is help to coat the Brussels sprouts in the seasoning. And then they're ready to go in the air fryer. So actually everything that I cooked today, I did on 375 and it seemed to work pretty well. But again, different air fryers are different. Um, so make sure that, you know, if your air fryer came with a, a, a manual that told you how to do vegetables like Brussels sprouts, definitely follow the manual for what they said. But it, they cooked so fast. I want to say they cooked in like seven minutes. So for those of you that usually do Brussels sprouts, um, maybe in the oven, you guys know that that is a huge, huge time decrease in cook time. Um, so that's really nice. And again, really convenient. I almost wish you could have like three or four air fryers going at the same time. <laughs> Um, and then next up, we did red potatoes. So I love red potatoes because number one, they're easy to cut up. Um, and number two, I think they just air fry up really well. Um, so what I did here, I have a ramekin filled with our seasoning. And what I have in there is garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, salt, and pepper. And this is honestly our go-to seasoning for the potatoes. I had some extra that I had with eggs this morning from um, the batch that I have here, which was delicious. Um, so same thing, here I go with my avocado oil. And then I'm gonna add my seasonings. And of course, what's really great about this is you can limit the amount of salt that goes in. And we are marinating and um, seasoning everything ourselves. So we know 
how much of everything's going in, which is really great. I am going to be completely honest. I typically eyeball this. Um, I don't usually measure. And of course, it's going to depend on the amount of potatoes that you're going to do as well. You want to make sure you get a single layer, especially if you have the basket with the, and I'll pull it out once I have the chicken done. Um, if you have the basket, you want to make sure you're on a single layer on the air fryer. So I'm going to shake that up. And the paprika gives it such a beautiful color. And this seasoning is just so delicious. So you guys can see here, um, that's pretty much done. So when we talk about, while well, our uh, chicken's still going, looks like we got a, maybe three more minutes until I flip it. Um, what's really nice about this is we have our balanced plate. We have carbohydrate, not really our grain. We're air frying our grain um, on our chicken, right? Because we have those breadcrumbs. Um, we would want to be careful with the amount of potatoes we're pairing there. And, you know, the Brussels sprouts are going to be really filling as well. So we have vegetable, potato, grain, and protein. And what's nice is we're going with lean protein. And this is going to have some nice crunch. Um, it's not going to be exactly fried chicken. So if you guys have air fried chicken before, I'm sure you're familiar with that. But it really is such a nice option and so much healthier because you saw how much oil went in there. It re that was it. <laughs> there really wasn't a lot. And when you think about the fat that's in that, in all of it, we're spraying oil, which I love to use the spray because you can control it. And what's nice about this, if you look at the, the white top here, a lot of different brands have it now. It doesn't have propellant. So it's 100% oil, um, avocado oil in the ingredients list. So that's something to look for. So you just spray it, use a minimal amount of oil, and you still get a really nice crunch, which is great. I mean, even the potatoes. I mean, does anybody have a do potatoes all the time at, at home that they have a seasoning that they'd like to share or anything like that for the group? Definitely put it in there, but they're so versatile. We made a, for the Super Bowl, we made sweet potato nachos, and I actually air fried the sweet potatoes before I put them in the, the cast iron in the oven with all the toppings, and they came so perfect. And again, like the cook time is decreases so much, which is really great. Um, all right, let's take a look at these. Oh my gosh, guys, they look so good. I'm just gonna flip them. With my food safety hat on, not wanting to use the same fork that I use the raw chicken with. These honestly are almost done, I think. And I'm gonna tempt them. Does anybody know what temperature chicken should be cooked to? 165? Yeah, oh, 165, oh. exactly, absolutely. That was a total guess. That was perfect. It's so hard too sometimes with the types of thermometers that we have. I know mm. sometimes when we grill, <laughs> yeah. they go so slow and they're the digital ones and you're like, or not the digital, the analog ones. And it's like, where does that actually fall? Mm. Um, but I have a really great thermometer that reads quickly. So I'm honestly gonna keep that in there probably for another two minutes or so. You guys saw that the chicken was sliced pretty thin, um, which is why it's cooking up so quickly. There's a comment in the chat, Sam, that says that Home Goods has a variety of different gourmet seasonings. And I will love that. that. Yes. That um, is awesome. Home Goods has such cool stuff like that, like different kitchen, um, it, like different things that you'd never find in like a ShopRite or a Wegmans, which is really cool. I love Wegmans or Home Goods for that and Marshalls, right? All right, so let's do the bananas really quick. I'll show you guys what I did. Um, these definitely, again, they got a little bit sticky, but has anybody air fried bananas before? No, but I am intrigued. Okay, so it's de it was definitely a, an experience. I've done it a couple of times, but never putting a little bit of brown sugar on them. Um, that definitely <laughs> hardened up a little bit in there. So I'll explain when I pull that out. But all I did was add a little brown sugar, slice up a banana, add a little brown sugar and cinnamon and just mix it up. So I didn't want to add a lot of sugar to it, right? Because that's not naturally occurring sugar. We're literally adding added sugar to it. So you want to be careful with that. Um, but they come out so, they're not crunchy, but they, like, they're they like caramelized on the outside. Um, and I love to put it in Greek yogurt. So the reason why I went with Greek yogurt is uh, because it's higher in protein. And it's also gonna typically be lower in sugar than traditional yogurt, uh, just the way it's processed. Plain Greek yogurt, it has about six grams of sugar per serving and like those 5.3 ounce cups, which really is not a lot at all. And it's usually naturally occurring because milk has naturally occurring sugar. 
So that's a really nice option. Some people just cannot do plain Greek yogurt and that's okay. <laughs> it is very tart. It's a substitution for sour cream. I know I've mentioned on these calls that I've actually, I used to do in another life, I used to do food demonstrations and I use um, Greek, plain Greek yogurt instead of sour cream on tacos and nobody knew until I told them and they were shocked. So if you are not a plain Greek yogurt fan for um, sweet things, that's okay. They, there are a lot of varieties out there in the supermarket now that are gonna be lower in sugar. Um, and there's even a couple that don't add any sugar. They just have maybe some fruit, like naturally occurring fruit in there. Sometimes, sometimes with um, yogurt, the first ingredient, um, or the sec first ingredient should be milk, right? But if the second ingredient is sugar, then it says like blueberries or strawberries, which actually means the concentration of the sugar in the product is more than the actual fruit. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Just a little nutrition facts tidbit in there. So I'm just gonna temp our chicken. It definitely looks done, but this uh, coating is deceiving. Oh yeah, we are way above 165. See, I get chatting about, <laughs> about nutrition and then that's it. Okay. So what I wanted to show you guys is I have the basket, oops, the basket version. So um, I know some of you might have the sheet version where it's almost like an, a toaster oven, it kind of looks like, but it air fries. Um, I've used that one before too. I really like this one. It's definitely smaller for my little apartment. Um, but as you guys can see, I'm gonna try to hold it up as close as possible. Um, they came out really, really good. And as you guys can see when they, they're battered, um, they actually look like they're they're done, but clearly they're not. So um, they have a nice like golden or a brownish check or color to them now. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about like things you could use to dip these in because that's also another really fun topic. So what do you guys, if you guys are making breaded chicken at home, if you're doing something like a chicken nugget, um, what would you use to dip? I mean, I guess a lot of people use ketchup. What do you guys typically use? I know it's kind of a weird thing. As an adult, I haven't really done this until we got the air fryer and we started making chicken nuggets, <laughs> which is great. But if anybody has something they'd like to share, I see barbecue sauce, awesome. Honey mustard, mm, Frank's red hot, love that too. Awesome, okay. So I have a couple of things that I just wanna to touch on here. Sriracha, that's delicious. Pesto, ooh, I love that. And what's so nice about these two, they're a great size for salad. I don't know why pesto reminded me of salad, but <laughs> that's another thing that you can do as well. So it's just a really nice way, even if you want to meal prep a little bit, um, obviously they're not going to be as crunchy if you try to reheat them um, to put in a salad, but it's just another nice option. It's, and you guys can see, we finished, these were done in what, seven or eight minutes. And again, thickness, the type of um, air fryer that you have are going to make a difference. Um, so dipping sauces. So I love the idea of barbecue sauce. It totally changes the, um, the taste of it, right? Like doesn't, it almost doesn't feel like you're eating a chicken nugget anymore with barbecue sauce. We do want to be careful and all sauces in general, we do want to be careful with sugar content and salt content as well. There are definitely lower sugar items out there that are awesome. Um, one that I love, I actually have the, um, hot, it's not hot, but it's the, they call it Baracha. So it's a vegetable sriracha. The brand is True Made. I don't know if anybody's heard of that, but it's actually, um, they try to really limit the added sugar and it's made from different vegetables. So if anybody's heard of this brand, definitely let me know. Um, but it's really cool. They have a viracha. They, I think they have a barbecue sauce and I know they have a ketchup, which is pretty cool. But you do want to be careful with that. But again, even if you have traditional barbecue sauce or you have um, other type of dipping sauces that you like that might be a little higher in sodium and sugar. What's nice is you can limit the amount that you use, right? So if it's something you really enjoy, it's your go-to brand, just be careful with the amount that you put into a little ramekin or into, um, or onto your plate. And that way you can really be mindful that way. Um, so that's, that's really great. This is what I love about these two, the sodium content really isn't that high. Um, Ooh, dilute it with chicken broth. I love that. <laughs> you guys have such good suggestions. Seriously, so awesome. Um, and even mixing like with honey and mustard, I actually sometimes make my own because I always forget to buy it if I'm going to make these. So I'll actually put a little honey in mustard and just mix it up. And again, another way to say, okay, I know I don't want something super sweet. Sometimes the honey mustards on the market aren't even that sweet, but it is another option um, to just control the amount that goes in there. That's awesome. Um, 
does anybody have questions? I can't, that went so quickly. I can't believe we have 10 minutes left. I'm shocked. <laughs> what question, is everybody? Sam. Yeah. Um, Sam, what, how ripe of a banana do you need? to um, air fry that's a really good question so i probably just based on like what i did today i definitely wouldn't use an overly ripe i'll show you guys what the banana i have here this is what i used um this might even be i probably maybe yesterday you see how it's a little um mm -hmm. it's got a couple of brown spots i'd probably be a little more yellow than this okay. um a little riper just so it would hold the the texture because it did kind of not that it like it it got a little melty because of the brown sugar, but it was it was really good. Really, really good. Cool. Good question. Anybody else? Anybody else have like a favorite thing they want to share? We do um, I know I mentioned it already, but we do buffalo cauliflower. And the batter the chickpea flour makes and throwing it in the air fryer, I can't believe how crunchy it comes out. It's amazing. A plantain is good. Yep, you can absolutely do plantains as well. Mm-hmm. I've seen recipes online. I haven't tried it myself, but the plantain chips you can actually do in here. Um, I haven't tried it, but if anybody does try it, definitely let me know and let me know how to do it. <laughs> what worked for you? Because that sounds really good. I like to dip those in hummus. Yes, sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Zucchini with olive oil. Yes, zucchini is really fun too. I've done that before also. Yep. And you don't need a lot, exactly. Salt and pepper is really nice. And I know that I've also brought up before um, on our demos, the smoked paprika. Has anybody worked with that? Um, that is really nice. And I actually put that on the potatoes that I cooked this morning because I love the smoky flavor. So they actually smoke the peppers before they dry them and grind them up. So it does have more of a smoky flavor than traditional paprika, which is really nice. Yeah, I actually just use a frozen bag of broccoli. I was like, I needed some kind of veggie. I was cooking chicken the other night for dinner. I'm like, okay, what's my veggie? I know nothing fresh. So I just dumped yeah. my bag of frozen broccoli in there. Didn't even season nothing. It came out nice and crunchy and crispy and it was perfect. Yes. Yes. I love doing broccoli and cauliflower. Again, those pulled up really, really nicely. I mean, the Brussels sprouts did too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really great point as well. I mean, even frozen veggies in general. So, I mean, obviously when you get like peppers and onions, you're not going to air fry them, but it's just so nice to have on hand and such an easy way to incorporate into meals and kind of balance out your plate. Like we see here, um, with something, if you don't have any fresh on hand, I love to have those in the freezer for that, ex those exact moments, Jen, exactly what you said. Was there anything else in the comments? I thought I saw one or two other things, Jen. There's a comment here. How about popcorn for snack? Ooh, great question. I love popcorn. So a lot of people don't realize that popcorn is actually a whole grain as well. Um, what gets tricky is when we buy it or like when you think about getting it at the movie theater, right? It's got a ton of butter on it. So we want to be careful with those types of popcorns, but there are definitely better options out there. And if you're someone who likes the buttered popcorn, that's fine. Just buy a plain or like a, a, a sea salt one and just combine the two. That way you're not eating as much of the buttered popcorn that you would. And what I love about popcorn is you can do about three cups for a snack and it's really filling. Um, so if I'm really looking for something good to munch on, I'll do that with maybe some seeds. So sometimes I do like a roasted pumpkin seeds um, with the popcorn because what's gonna happen there is you have the grains or the whole grains in the popcorn, right? So you've got carbs some fiber, and then you've got protein, good fat, and fiber from the um, nuts or seeds, whatever you choose, and that's going to help you to be more, keep you more full with the snacks. That's a really great, great question. So thanks for popping it in there. Does anybody have any other general nutrition questions? I mean, we're kicking off National Nutrition Month, so we've got a lot of good, um, a lot of great presentations coming your way for the Let's Talk Wellness on Tuesdays. Yeah. No. We do, and also too, I wanted to make a call out for your March My Plate Madness that is currently going on within Virgin Pulse um, under your Be Well account. So please log in to Be Well, and you will see your survey right there. We are finding out what is PSCG's favorite food this week. Is your is your sweet sixteen? So is it apples or bananas, pineapples or oranges? I will say it's going neck and neck. The one food that's actually skyrocketing right now is taking the lead is chicken. So over beans. So please uh, take this survey. We have about a thousand people who have completed the survey so far. Um, 
and it was really um, great. So there's one more comment. <clears throat> oh, are you saying cook up the popcorn and nut in the fryer? So I wasn't sure if that was a an air fryer question. I've never I've never heard or seen anyone cook those up in the air fryer. Had is that what the question was related to? Sorry if I misunderstood the question. It's hard for me to kind of see them <laughs> on my computer. Yeah. Yeah, I've never done that before. Um so I've never done popcorn in the air fryer, but I I don't think I've seen any recipes for that either. Have you Jen? No, and I think it might go back to that broccoli leaf where I get caught up in the convention. Um, because that yeah. actually happened with me. I, I was cooking a hamburger in there and I threw a piece of cheese on and the cheese went flying. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, you gotta be careful with that stuff. That and we had made Brussels sprouts before, but that had never happened to me. Mm -hmm. so that was the first time this morning that that ever happened. So just be mindful of that. You know, it really does spin, the air spins really quickly. <laughs> So it'll pick stuff up. All right, and yeah, if you guys, you go, go ahead. There's one, There's just one more comment in there. Um, any healthy foods for like a good palate? For, for I'm sorry, what did you say, Jen? Um, I didn't hear that last part, you cut out. Sorry, sorry. guys. I'm like, yeah. Um, there's a comment here of an adult child with autism and it's hard to find foods that are healthy for her palate. Is there any suggestions? Yeah, that's, that's a really great, great question. And I think it's with that type of thing, it's very individual. So sometimes, um, it's whether it's plainer foods or needing to season a little bit more, um, I'd be more than happy, um, to who I'm sorry, I can't see the name of who put that in there, but I'd be more than happy to kind of connect offline. That's a really great question. It's just super individual. So, you know, it could be about seasoning more. It could be about seasoning less. It could be about, um, the different types of foods that you're putting together on the plate. So I'd be more than happy to, to chat about that offline. That's a really, really great question, but yep. so, yeah, thanks Jen. My email. And I just yeah. added, um, your email address to the chat. So feel free to say that but we are coming up on time right now. And I just want to call out to you guys next week, we are finishing up or not finishing up. We're still starting going with our Let's Talk Wellness series for March. It is fueling your workout. So what you eat surrounding your exercise routine can make or break a great workout. So join fitness professionals, Holly and Shannon to learn the best pre and post workout nutrition so you could get the most out of every exercise session. Same time, same place. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, I'm Jen Totten and Sam Nuzio. So if you guys have any questions, please all stick around for a little bit longer to keep the chat open. Um, otherwise, have a great day. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody.